new eights to this video, um, what I'm going to do is run through our three main measures of centre that we're going to be looking at this year. Now they all start with M, which can be a little bit confusing, but I'm going to run through uh, each one, uh, how it's calculated, uh, and show you some examples as well. Uh, we did do these when you were in year seven, so hopefully this will be just a little bit of a review for you. So when we are looking at measures of centre um, from a data set, what we're really asking is what is, um, what's a typical piece of data in our data set. So the reason we want to do that is you might have a lot of data and you want to get just a really quick snapshot on what is, um, what is typical or what is, uh, say, a common value that's in your data set. Um, we have three different ways of doing this because um, obviously there's, there's a range of different data that you can come across. Um, in terms of, of size and, and all sorts of different things, type. Um, and so we do need more than one way of measuring this, this particular statistic. Um, and another reason for that is because um, you, in some data sets you can have something called an outlier. Um, and one of these is actually quite affected by something called an outlier. That is for a later lesson though. thought I'd just mention it before we, before we start. So the three measures that we're going to explore in this video are the mode, the mean, and then the median. Like I said, all starting with M. So you want to make sure that you've got a way of, uh, I guess, telling these apart when you come across them. First of all, the mode is probably the easiest one because there isn't actually a calculation involved. So the mode is the one that you see the most in your data set. So in other words, the one that has the highest frequency. And you'll see I've used the term here, most common. Now the way that I remember or recall um, which is which in terms of the mode is if you have a look, mode starts with M-O and so does this word most. So the most common is the mode. Now, an uh, interesting point about the mode is it's used for both categorical data and for numerical data, which is unique out of all three, because what you're going to find when we look at the mean and the median is we can't use them for categorical data. Now, what I'm going to do is just run through um, some examples of the mode with you, and I've got one that I'd like you to try. Uh, in a moment, I'll, I'll prompt you, but hopefully you've got your, um, your summary book with you so you're ready to jot down some notes. What you might like to do is pause here and put down a definition for our first measure of centre, this one, the mode. Once you're ready, though, we'll move on and I'll have a look at some, some examples where you might need to find the mode. First of all, just with categorical data, you'll notice this one here is um, a survey taken of 23 countries, a sample of 23 countries, and what you'll see is they've been categorised by their climate, whether they've got cold, moderate or hot climate. You might be asked with categorical data, what is the mode? And of course, looking at that, I want to see which of these climate types, cold, moderate or hot, was had the highest frequency. I'm just going to get a box and put a little box around there because, of course, that's our highest number in our count. So out of, out of all um, the frequencies in the table, 14 was the highest frequency. 14 is not the mode, though. The mode is the data value that had that highest frequency. So the mode in this case is actually moderate, and that's a common mistake that students make. They think mode is the number. It's not the number. 14 is just the frequency. So I'm just going to put a note in brackets here. The mode is moderate with a frequency of 14 out of the 23, of course. That's what it looks like from a frequency table, but you can also uh, identify a mode from a column graph. And if you have a look here, I'll just zoom out a little bit so you can see it. Um, we've got a column graph, it's, it's the same data. We've got the cold, moderate and hot climates um, on, the, on the horizontal axis. Uh, so you'll see here the label climate type and then the frequency up the side. So again, uh, in terms of finding your mode when it's from a column, column graph, all you need is the highest column. And so in this case, that belongs to this climate type, again, of course, it's the same data, so it's moderate. 
Now you can have more than one mode. Uh, so say you had moderate and hot were equal um, with their frequency, so their two columns were the same height, you would say that moderate and hot were the mode of the data. So um, depending on how many categories you, you have, you might have two modes, you might even have more than two modes and we call them multimodal. Now you can have a mode of, from numerical data as well. If we have a look at this frequency table, this data here taken is uh, for family size. So how many people are in a family? If I want the mode of this data, again, all I have to do is find that particular data value that's got the highest count or the highest frequency. So out of them, you'll see five was the highest, which means that the mode is this bit over here the mode family size was three. So three, I'm assuming, people per family. Again, the mode is not the five. That is the frequency. That's how many, um, how many families had a family size of three. What I'd like you to do now is um, Pause for a moment, and this is the example that you can put into your summary book under mode, under your definition of a mode. You see we've got the number numbers of occupants in nine cars. So how many people were in the car, in other words? Um, these are cars that are stopped at a traffic light. First of all, um, I want you to jot this down and work out what is the mode of the data set, and then just a brief sentence on what does the mode tell us. So pause here to do that, then when you're ready, press play. So having a look, we've got um, one, two, three, four, we've got five cars that had one occupant. We've only got two cars that had two occupants and looks like two cars as well that had three occupants. So what this means is this one here had the highest frequency, highest frequency of five. And so the mode is whatever that value was, the mode is one occupant or one person in the car. Now what does it tell us? Well it tells us that out of the nine cars the most common uh, number of occupants was one. So I'll just jot that down. It tells us that out of these nine cars the most common, since that's what the mode calculates, the most common number of occupants uh, in the cars was one. There we go. Now, um, like I said, the mode is something that we can use for, for both categorical and numerical data. Just in summary, make sure that when you are stating the mode, that you're stating the data value itself and not the frequency of that data. What I'm going to look at now is our next measure of centre. This one's called the mean. Now this one, um, if I go back to my page earlier, a brief definition of what the mean is. One of the easiest things to say is that it's the average because it is. Um, average is a term that we mostly, well, mo more commonly would use um, if you ask someone uh, randomly if they know how to calculate the average. Um, a typical person uh, would have an understanding of this one because it's a very, very popular measure of centre. So average, um, in terms of how we find it though, it's the result of adding all of your data together and then you need to divide that, that sum by how many values you have in your data set. So as a result of this, it's important to note this is only for numerical data because we can't add together categories of data. So we can't add together, uh, for example, the cold, the moderate and the hot from our categorical data before. So only for numerical data. Uh, looking at some examples of this, so remember we're gonna add the data together and we're gonna divide. I've got two um, dot points here summarising those steps. So if you do want to um, have a couple of things jotted down in your summary book, um, here are some examples that you can do. First of all, what we're going to do is find the average of uh, A. Then I'd like you to try B and C, which I'll show you in a moment. 
So to find the average or the mean of this data here, I'm first going to add these values together. So if we add them together, we're going to get 12. We call this the sum of the values. Next thing you need to do is have a look at how many values you had in your data. I've got four values. So that means that my sum, which was 12, I need to divide by four. You can write it like this, or you can write it like that. It doesn't matter. You'll see that we get our mean value for this one is three. I'm just gonna put a little box around it. That's my final answer there, it's three. What I'd like you to do is try it with this part B. So my values are 12, 15, 20, 32, and 25. Remember to pause before I do it. So you have a go. Um, and then when you're ready, press play. So first step would be to add all of these together. And when you do that, we should get 104. Have a look how many values we've got. There are five. So now we divide that by five. And what you'll see, which commonly happens with the mean, is we get a decimal. So we just need to round that off. Often you're prompted in terms of how many um, decimal places, say you had a recurring decimal. Um, it's, it's common that you'd be instructed to round that one off. Um, but if you get a terminating decimal, as we've got here, just give the full answer that you get. So we get 20.8. Again, pause it here for me and have a go at this one before I do. We're adding these together first. And we get 21. And now we have seven values. So 21 divided by seven gives us three. So we actually got three twice as a coincidence. So there was my mean for that one, and for B it was um, 20.8. So adding up the values, dividing by how many you have. Just going back to our final one now, we are looking at the median. This one's probably uh, the most uh, time-consuming one if you are doing it by hand, as we are now. Um, and that's because when you look at the median, you need to make sure first that your data is in order. So I've got these underlined over here. It needs to be in order. Now, whether that's lowest to highest or highest to lowest, it doesn't matter because once you have it in order, you're going to find the value that's right in the middle of that data set. Again, since we're ordering um, the numbers, uh, this is only applicable for numerical data again. So one way to remember this one is if you are, I guess, familiar with what a median strip is, which is a part of the road that divides uh, the, the left and the right hand lanes, a median strip runs down the middle of the road. And of course, our median is the value that's in the middle of your data. Finally, I'll show you um, how we calculate this. First of all, of course, make sure your data is in order because that's a big error to make, um, to just grab your data, find the one that's in the middle and then realize later, oops, it wasn't in order. Once it's in order, you simply need to find the one that's in the middle. Now, some people do that by crossing out um, one on either side of the data till you find the middle. Uh, you can do that with small data sets. It just gets a little annoying when you do have really big data sets. Say you've got something like 30 values. So I'll show you. I'll show you a shortcut method of getting the middle as well. Just to note, when you've got an even number of values, it means you don't have one single value that's in the middle of your data. You actually have two values in the middle. When you have that happen, and I will show you one example of this, you actually take the average of the middle two. So average as in we add them together and we divide by how many there are. So we divide by two in those cases. I will show you that in a second. First of all, we're going to locate the median of this data set just here. Uh, what you'll notice though is it's not in order. So 
If you feel confident with this one, pause it here and have a go before I do. If not, follow along with me. You'll see um, that I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I've got 11 values, which means I will have one that's directly in the middle, exactly in the middle, because 11 is an odd number. I'm going to get it in order first. So I can see I've got two ones. Um, I've got three twos. Notice I'm lining them up just so that I know um, by the time I finish that I've got the exact same number of values. So I had three twos, one, two threes. I've got two fours. I've got a five and I've got a six. So notice I, once I put the last one down, it was in line with the last one above. So I know I've got the same number. Now the number 11 if I was to split that into two groups, I'm going to get two groups of five plus one extra, since five and five will give me 10 and one more will give me 11. So what you can do, um, I like to do that first because then I know I've got two groups of five, one, two, three, four, five, either side, there's my first group of five. And here's my next group of five and so the one that's left out is my median, the one that's right in the centre here. Median here is three. One thing that you can do, I mentioned a little shortcut before. Um, there is a, a, a way of working out what the position of the median is. I'll just write it here, the position in the ordered data. So what I mean by that is it um, is it third, is it seventh, is it twelfth? Uh, where um, from the from the beginning um, of the data is the median. And what you can do is you can take how much you data you've got, add one, and then divide it by two. We had eleven pieces of data, so eleven plus one divided by two, and you'll see that we get uh, twelve divided by two is six. So the median is sixth in the ordered data. So if you have a look at ours, we had five values and then the sixth was our median. And if, if you work from the, from the other end, which you can do, one, two, three, four, five, sixth was our median. So that little bit down there, which is the n plus one over two, is one way of quickly finding the position of the median and then um, counting across to find where that median is. Um, and I... I guess any method is fine as long as you um, are fully aware that once you've found your median, you should have the same number of values below it as you have above it, if it's exactly in the middle, which of course it should be. One more example just to show you is underneath. Um, this one here has got 12 values. So after we order it, just make a note, um, of course, Whenever you have an even number of values in a data set, your median will be in between your middle two because you don't have one value in the middle. First of all, I'm going to get this data in order. So I've got a two, I've got two threes, I've got one, two fours, four fives, two sixes, and then all the way over here I've got a 12. There we go. Now the data is in order. So think about how many you've got. I've got 12 pieces of data, which means two groups of six. So I've got three, six, and then of course three and six. So here's our middle two here. So when you have an even number, it's a little bit annoying because you do have one extra step, we'll just change colours. Um, the median is actually the middle of these two. And see, so the easiest way to get the middle of those is to find the average of those two. So I'll just make a note, median is middle 
of these two. numbers. Um, now this, this one's pretty easy because the middle of 5 and 5 is just 5 or the average of 5 and 5 is just 5 but of course if you had more difficult numbers what we're trying to do is just get the average of them and to do that we would add them together and we would divide by 2. So our median here is five. There we go. So we need to do a little bit of practice with this. So in summary, we had our mode, uh, that was the most common. We had our mean, which was the average, add them up, divide by how many there are. And our median, which once your data is ordered, is the number that's right in the middle. So I'll finish there. Um, we will in the next video look at something called the range, which is a measure of spread. Um, before we have a good practice with all of these different statistics.